All right. So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to introduce to you Critter Safari, uh, a game that engages girls in the practice of computational thinking. So in this talk, we'll talk about the motivation for our design, show you some of the game's core features, and also walk you through a little bit of our process. For, so first, let me introduce the team. So I'll go in this order. OK, here, next to me is Chao Yu. He was our technical lead. Here's, here's Gwen. She's our user researcher. There's Chet coming down the aisle. <laughs> And then finally, David, who's following him. And I'm Tarhada. I was the project manager and strategist. So I'll begin by defining our problem space. Uh, what we wanted to address really was the gender gap in computer science. So although women are currently underrepresented across all fields of STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, if you look in this graph here, the proportion of women working in a field of computing has actually been declining for the last 20 years. Okay? So this is actually a really startling fact because as we all know, computer science is currently experiencing a shortage of workers, despite immense projected growth. So why are women not entering the field? Well, research has shown that although women, that's shown that women tend to lose interest in math and science subjects very early on. And by the time that girls hit middle school, the majority of them have already lost interest in computer science as a college degree when they move forward. So what we aim to do here is to intervene very early on, even before they lose this interest. And what we, and the target audience we chose to focus on is elementary school girls. So after doing some competitive analysis and secondary research, we mapped out all the mechanisms that you see up here uh, that expose girls to computational thinking and computer science. Some provide facilitated structured learning, such as traditional classroom instruction. Others provide um, unstructured exposure to computer science such as uh, the robotics kits you see in some kindergarten classrooms. Um, so, okay. Because children learn extensively through unstructured and very self-directed play, we're interested in exposing girls to computer science through social and casual gameplay. It is here that we see a very promising avenue for exploration. So the design question we responded to was, how can we engage six to eight year old girls in computational thinking through gameplay? We focused on computational thinking because it's the foundation of computer science. It is the thought process that entails formulating problems into sequence of steps so that it can be effectively carried out by computer. Basic computational thinking involves planning of sequence, debugging them, and abstracting one for many. Um, the Ultimately, our, the, our project goal was to expose girls to fundamental computer science concepts, engage girls in computational thinking through hands-on gameplay, and encourage girls to creatively define and explore their own virtual world. And so, we would like to introduce you to our game, Cutter Safari. Cutter Safari is an animated game where we would like girls to define and to explore using computational thinking and tangible user interface. We have a short video clip here to see today to demonstrate how the girls is playing our game. A lot of it is just lack of early exposure, I think. Uh, and I, I don't quite understand why, but uh, computers are sort of considered boy things early on, and um, it just means that a lot of girls don't have an opportunity to see Computer science is a very broad field and it has potential for impact in a lot of different areas and so there's no reason that very young kids shouldn't be exposed to that and realizing that it's a part of their everyday lives. A big part of computational thinking is sequential thinking and being able to take a process and break it down into pieces and really understand what each piece is going to do uh, and put all of them together to, to get to a coherent whole. So early exposure to that um, makes it a little bit easier for a student to then pick up a robust programming language and learn some of the theory behind it and be successful in that process. What do you guys think is the best part about this game? I think the best part about 
Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, so let me walk you through a little bit more and talk a little bit more about um, how to play this game. So first, the girl will be able to choose their own characters, the setting, and also the critters to go onto the board. So once they put these figurines onto the board, physical figurines, then these figurines will come onto, on, onto the, the screen, they come to life. And so second, they will be planning their sequences by putting together um, direction blocks and also action blocks. They can explore the game world and at the same time be able to perform various different actions. For example, they can love, they can dance, they can also sing. And um, third, lastly, um, once they are ready to uh, run the sequence, then they will simply going to be pushing the run button and enjoy the animation on the iPad. So how did we get here? Um, this being MHCID, we followed a tightly iterative process during which we developed four prototypes that we tested with little girls across several, several sessions, just like this one here. Um, and these sessions and our secondary research um, led us to some key insights that informed our design decisions, so I just want to share a few of those with you now. We read a 2009 study that showed that girls specifically prefer a tangible user interface to a graphical mouse-based interface. So we were exploring this further through our prototyping and we found that with blocks, it's really easy for girls to play together collaboratively. And blocks are really robust and they can be moved around to afford easy debugging of sequences. So Critter Safari has a tangible user interface. Girls prefer exploratory gameplay to competitive gameplay. So we've designed Critter Safari to be a visually dynamic virtual world in which girls can freely move around and play through trial and error. We learned that a bridge between the physical world and a virtual world is a really compelling thing for, um, for young kids, specifically for six to eight year olds. Um, and enabling girls to choose the figurines and then have them come to life on screen enhance the gameplay for our target audience. And finally, in terms of the display, um, we needed something that was large enough for several girls to crowd around, but small enough that it could be picked up and animation sequences can be shared and showed off to family and friends. So Critter Safari is an iPad app. So in the end, we have two polished prototypes, a model prototype that demonstrates the look and feel of Critter Safari, and a functional prototype to uh, prove the technical concept. And we invite you all to come and play with those uh, right after the presentation in the poster session. Design is an iterative process. With more time, more can be done. We have already implemented and tested the core functionality of Critter Safari. And here's our vision. Um, we think we can take our game into the next step. First, we we'll add some clever mission can make this game more fun for multiple player. People can go to the next step after finish the mission, which will help us scale up the difficulty of the game. Second, we we'll like to give the girl additional creative control by defining action blocks through game expansion packs and personalizing characters. Third, also see great potential to enhance creator factor and let the girl draw their own game world. We have no doubt they could create something beyond our imagination. And as you can see, we have a lot of fun with this project. And of course, we learn a lot during this process. First of all, the problem space is very challenging because it's a social issue and we have an international project team. So it is very important for us to understand the, uh, the common of the question and why the problem is existing to help us moving forward. Second, we found that matching impact is very challenging with a long-term study. We run research that show early intervention can make a positive impact down the line. Last but not least, working with children is unpredictable but rewarding. And we just wanted to finish off with some thank yous. Um, we'd like to extend a big thank you to our instructors and classmates for your great critique and driving us forward. Our sponsor, Microsoft Skype, Alain Martin, um, our wonderful expert in the video, Sarah Fueling, one of our instructors who connected us with her parent network, um, and most of all to our research participants, to the moms and the dads, and particularly um, their daughters. Thank you so much. Any questions? Sure. Um, so the question is, um, does this, can this not appeal to all children? Why just specifically girls? Um, and actually, we as a team didn't want to exclude boys in our design. So we've designed it to inherently appeal to girls, um, but we were very conscious of not 
not creating sort of stereotypically gendered elements that might exclude one group or another. Um, and part of that is, is joining the movement to sort of normalize girl games and normalize girls playing with computers. Um, and so absolutely, boys, I hope they pick it up and enjoy it as well. It's a great question, thank you. So the question was uh, if we thought about whether the game could be actually inspire them to want to do something more computer, more tied to a computer. Um, so one of the things is that the audience that we worked with were really young and they're not really thinking about careers at that moment necessarily. <laughs> but, <laughs> but well, the thing well, they were. One of them wanted to be a ninja. Oh yeah, one ninja. of them wanted to be a ninja so. and then a volleyball player. <laughs> but like, the, so the thing is, is that um, that's why we focus on the computational thinking, the thought process. Because if they encounter um, computer science later on in life, where it's like breaking down something, telling it into very small parts, and then telling something else to do something, that is computer science, that is programming. And so by instilling it to them in a way that's really digestible, in building blocks, you know, we hope that that line of thinking will really be fostered later on. I think one of the things we thought about is actually including weird, like, not weird, but the fun ways of including computer terms. So like we had a parent tell us, why don't you call it funky function? Or you know, like abstract, we call it abstracted animal or something like that. So they at least have the familiarity of the terms. Mm -hmm. But maybe, maybe in the future the characters will be, I don't know, What's a computer scientist though? That's another thing. Like, I, I, when you're a computer scientist, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. I actually tried to draw a computer scientist. We did sort of a storytelling and exercise, it and it was just somebody holding a laptop. I really it didn't know her. how to not <laughs> fall into stereotypical, <laughs> like, you know, a stereotypical trap by doing that. So it's a great, it's a great question. Yeah. One more question? Yes. Did a Kickstarter campaign go well? Uh, no, <laughs> but we've been asked outside actually in the poster session whether we're going to take this forward, and you know. We're just really tired. I want to say congrats to all, everyone who did presentations today. Everyone should give a round of applause. We're done. We're, it's over.